and cry harder. Allahu Akbar, several people prayed. Baba, the woman is right, his father interrupted. We must keep this boat moving, but you will not sink, nor will the others. Ahmed noticed him glance at the woman and her baby, then at the rest of the desperate, frightened strangers in the overcrowded boat. Baba pulled the inner tube off his shoulder and slipped it over Ahmed's head and around his torso. Then he leaned over and whispered in his ear, Forgive me, my soul. For a moment I must leave you. Leave me? Where? But his father had already turned away. Baba? Ahmed tried to reach for him only to realize that his arms were pinned to his sides by the inner tube. By the time he'd freed them, his father's leg was already over the side of the boat. Ahmed lurched forward to grab him, but it was too late. His father slid into the dark water like an eel. A moment later, he reappeared, treading water. What are you doing? Ahmed shouted after him. We need to pull the boat. His father's eyes searched the passengers. Can anyone else swim? They were from a medley of places, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq. But Ahmed realized from the helpless way they looked at one another that they had one thing in common. None of them could swim. But then a voice behind him said in Iraqi-accented Arabic, I can. Ahmed turned around. A slight, wiry man took off his jacket, then his shirt. He handed them to the woman beside him who folded them neatly, as if to make a point that she expected him back. A little girl sat between them, half swallowed by her life jacket. I can too, said the captain. He looked ashamed about the motor, but Ahmed felt it wasn't his fault. He wasn't even really a captain. He was just an engineering student from Holmes, whom the smugglers had chosen from among the refugees to pilot the boat. This thankless duty had earned him an oblong orange buoy. He tossed it into the sea, then dove after it. Ahmed tried to give his father back the inner tube, but he refused to take it, claiming it would slow him down. The men swam to the front of the boat, and as a passenger shined a flashlight across the dark water, they looped the boat's tow rope around the buoy, conferring in tones too hushed for Ahmed to hear. Then each grabbed onto the rope with one hand, kicking with their feet and paddling with their free arm. Ahmed's father swam in front, the two men behind him. The boat jerked forward as if a giant hand had given it a shove. Cheers and shouts of praise be to God rose up from the passengers. Those in the center of the boat scooped water from the bottom into bottles and passed them to those on the edge to pour out. As he emptied bottles, Ahmed felt his fear ebb, replaced by pride that it was his father leading the swimmers. It reminded him of long ago weekends before the war, when his family had barbecued and picnicked with friends outside of Aleppo. Late at night, his father would lead the dabke, whirling the line of dancers as they held hands and stamped their feet to drum and tambourine. Ahmed would stare up at the star-filled sky and let himself be dragged along wildly, knowing Baba was in charge. But a half hour later, he was jolted from his memories as the wind picked up and choppy waves rocked the dinghy. Occasionally they spilled over the sagging sides and Ahmed could hear the water slosh in the bottom. He looked anxiously out into the beam of light that illuminated his father and the other swimmers. White caps broke over their heads, slowing their pace, but their free arms continued to pinwheel around. A hard summer rain began to fall. Within minutes, Ahmed was drenched. He told himself that rain this heavy never lasted long, but it stirred up the sea even more. The swimmers pulled the dinghy straight into the waves. It pitched and bucked pulling the swimmer's rope taut, but it stayed afloat. Then came the sideways wave. Ahmed didn't see it, but he felt it. It tipped the dinghy to one side and seemed to hold it there, as if considering the worth of those inside. Ahmed sucked in air, expecting to be flipped, but the wave let the dinghy slide down its side and instead swept over the swimmers so that they vanished completely. Then it ripped the buoy off the rope and tossed it into the darkness. There was a second of silent shock before everyone started shouting, shining their phones' flashlights across the water. Where are they? Can anyone see them? The captain sputtered to the surface. The Iraq.